The Mask, a movie starring Jim Carrey and Cameron Diaz that made us all die of laughter. That was a great movie, wasn't it? Well, what if they made a sequel? Even better, what if the sequel absolutely ruined the essence of the movie and probably even ruined watching films for you? Well, that's exactly what happened. And that's why today in Flick Summary, The Son of the Mask. This flick, if you can't even call it that, opens with a museum curator explaining the origins of a mysterious mask created by Loki, god of mischief, and son of Odin. Unfortunately, we don't get Tom Hiddleston as Loki. We get this guy. Who's that ugly guy? That's Loki, Norse god of mischief. He was also known as the trickster. The curator goes on to explain that the mask doesn't actually give you powers, but that it adds a nice touch to the Norse mythology. Are you sure about that? As he retells the story of the mask, a rather suspicious looking audience member attempts to get a closer look, but gets schooled by the speaker. Before you can even blink, the mysterious man has already gotten a hold of the mask, but is quickly disappointed when he finds out it's just a well made replica. What did you expect? As it turns out, the mysterious man was Loki himself trying to find the mask he made or he would be made to face his father Odin's wrath. Understandably so, Loki wants to avoid this at all costs. I mean, who would want to have the god of all gods being specifically angry at you? Definitely not me. Not me. Loki and the curator have a short banter that doesn't really add up too much as the spoiled god leaves the museum. And now we meet Tim Avery, a failed cartoonist and an average everyday guy with absolutely zero charisma. Tim is married to Tanya who is desperate to have kids and as you might have guessed, Tim would prefer to just stick with his dog. Otis. Honestly, after watching this movie, I completely agree. Anyway, speaking of Otis, the little rascal went on a walk by himself and brought with him a little souvenir, if you will. Oh, and it just so happens to be the very mask Stanley Ipkiss threw away all those years ago. Coincidence? I think not! Well, that's just great. As Tim and Tanya fight over their different positions when it comes to having kids, Tanya locks him out of the room and Tim decides to go hang out with Otis, his number one boy. Otis proudly shows off the treasure he found on his walk, the mysterious mask. Tim doesn't pay attention to the object and tells Otis that if he's going around stealing stuff, might as well make it valuable. If you're gonna steal something, steal something with a little value. Oh Tim, if you only knew. Back to Loki, this mischievous fella is relaxing at the beach, seemingly forgetting all about his dad's wrath. That is of course until he gets a rather harsh reminder. Odin appears from the heavens as a Power Ranger-like hologram and demands Loki to find the mask immediately, otherwise he will open a can of lightning on him. Find that mask before I open up a can of lightning on you! Man, that's almost as bad as watching this movie. We cut back to Tim and Tanya who are once again discussing the possibility of having kids. Uh, Tim explains his very reasonable fear of not having a stable income to support a kid, but Tanya doesn't seem to mind stating that he will be a great father either way. You don't listen, do you? Anyway, their moment is cut short when Tim announces he will be leaving for an office Halloween party, which apparently Tanya is unable to go, but doesn't have much of a costume in order to, you know, keep the Halloween spirit alive. Tanya suggests he take the mask Otis found and call it a day. Though not thrilled about the idea, he decides to go through with it anyway, it's better than no costume at all. While getting out of the car, he puts on the mask and of course, transforms into the masked character we all know and love. However, now that he is not not played by Jim Carrey, the mask turns out to be rather blah. I guess it's hard to live up to the previous one or maybe they're just lazy. The mask goes on one of his iconic musical numbers, but this time around it's uh, just way too cringy. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. After the party, the masked version of Tim remains when he decides to get crazy with his wife. Good for them, I guess. Tim wakes up the following morning feeling a little confused about the events of the night before. While his office is excited to see the man who rescued the party from being a total snooze fest, not only has he gained quite a lot of favor among his peers, but his boss promotes him asking him to make a cartoon out of the mask character. Of course, he agrees. Excited, Tim wastes no time in telling his wife the good news as soon as he gets home. Tanya congratulates him and tells him she has some news to share. She's pregnant! No! Oh God! No, God, please, no! Obviously, Tim is not too thrilled, but can't do much about it now, deciding to play along and pretend to be happy. 
Can we discuss how it only took her a day to figure out she was pregnant? Does she have superpowers? Right after the news, Tim is desperately trying to find the mask that landed him the promotion, but unfortunately for him, it is nowhere to be found, so for now, he has no choice but to let it be. During the pregnancy, the ultrasounds display particular images of the baby that it appears as if only Tim can see. One of them includes the baby dancing to disco music, normal ultrasound stuff, you know. Nine months later, the baby boy, now named Alvy, finally arrives and doesn't seem to be particularly fond of Tim. Neither are we, kid. We briefly return to Logi, who is desperately hunting down the mask, to no avail. While on the hunt, he gets some disturbing news from Odin, who tells him about how there has been a baby born from the mask, who has earned the very same powers from the object. He encourages Loki to visit hospitals that have had birth recently on the nearby area. Inevitably, Loki follows his dad's advice, obtaining hospital records through his powers as he starts closing in on the baby. Back to the family, the baby is slowly growing up and displaying mask-like traits, such as turning his head into a literal balloon. I guess the ultrasound wasn't proof enough that the baby was indeed the son of the mask. Tim, who's still not too fond of Alvy, takes care of his constant crying during the night as his sleep gets constantly interrupted. This is my hell. Things take a turn for the worse when Tanya has to leave to New York for a week for work, leaving Tim, who has been slacking at work, alone with a baby that basically hates him. This is my hell. As expected, the experience is absolutely nightmarish for the new dad as he tries to make his son tolerate his presence at least. All the while, Tim's boss is ready to replace him, but he commits to having the cartoon finished by the end of the week. He gets greenlit to do the work at home due to the baby and his wife's absence, but he has to get it done though. His commitment to get the cartoons finished turns out to be virtually impossible due to Alvis' incessant mischief and crying. Ah, I'm gonna kill my in order to get some sleep, Tim decides to let Alvy watch some TV, against his wife's wishes. Alvy, of course, being a baby with a particular set of skills, are a very particular set of skills, starts learning certain tricks that might make Tim go completely insane, which turns out to be Alvy's one true wish. I think you're evil! All the while, Otis finds the mask buried in his doghouse. He accidentally puts it on and turns into a terrifying masked version of himself, just like the first movie. Surprisingly, Otis and Alvy have similar motives, only applied to different people. Alvy wants Tim gone so he can become Tanya's center of attention, and Otis wants Alvy gone so he can once again be Tim's center of attention. Simultaneously, they devise different plans in order to take their opponents down. On one hand, Alvy starts performing songs, singing and dancing in ways a baby could never. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag -time gal. He convinces Tim he is crazy as he starts showing his neighbors the crazy things his kid can do. However, Alvy suddenly stops doing whatever crazy shenanigans he was doing when he is in front of anyone other than Tim, to make him believe he is truly only imagining things. On the other hand, Otis tries to get Alvy to go away in rather violent, almost Looney Tune like ways, but is always overpowered. Tim is basically going through a psychotic break as he tries to figure out whether or not he is going crazy. We all go a little mad sometimes. While this is taking place, Loki knocks on Tim's door to figure out if Alvy was one of the thousand of babies that could perhaps be the product of the mask. Once again, Alvy stops his crazy behavior and starts acting normally, convincing Loki that the baby was not the mask's child. Tim rushes Alvy to a pediatrician to figure out what's wrong with him. When Loki notices Alvy's behavior through the car, jackpot, Loki stops Tim, demanding to know where his mask is, but our protagonist is a little bit too occupied dealing with a potentially demonic baby, while the god of mischief introduces himself. I am Loki, god of mischief. Yeah, and I'm Tim, god of crazy baby land. A chase between the three, if you count the baby, ensues, but Loki manages to trap them. Once again, Loki demands to know the whereabouts of his mask, but Tim honestly says he doesn't know. The god of mischief doesn't really believe him and proceed to throw a huge grenade at the father and son, but Alvy manages to protect his dad and himself thanks to his mask genetics. 
Thankful Alvi rescued him, Tim finally establishes a connection with his son. The short father-son moment is immediately cut short when Odin takes control of Tim's body and strips Loki of his powers and immortality. It doesn't take too much for Alvi to torture poor Loki as they victoriously leave the scene. Tim and Alvi joyfully walk away when our guy gets a call from work to tell him that the pitch meeting for his cartoon is happening now. He hurries off to work with Alvi as he attempts to sell his idea, but instead gets fired as soon as he explains the premise of the show. You had one job. Although Tim is heartbroken over his new unemployment status, he is relishing with joy over his newfound bond with his son. While Tim and Alvi are sleeping, Loki breaks into the home where he summons Odin and asks for his powers back, which he returns without much of a protest. That easy? Huh? Loki wakes Tim up and kidnaps his son, demanding him to bring the mask to him within the hour if he wants to see his son again. Tanya conveniently returns home right when the child is missing and scolds Tim for not paying enough attention. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> As if attention would stop an all-powerful god. He urges Tanya to help him find Otis so he can return the mask to Loki. She agrees because well, what other choice does she have? Soon enough, they find Otis and Tim convinces him to let go of the mask to rescue his big brother Alvi, who will soon be his best friend. Finally letting go of his jealousy, Otis gives Tim and Tanya the mask as they set off to find Loki and rescue their son. Go get him, tiger. Loki and Alvi managed to grow a bit of a bond during the time he was held captive, given their similar abilities, each showing off their powers proudly. Tim and Tanya interrupt their bonding session when they promptly arrive to get their son back. As Loki snatches the mask away from the parents, he refuses to give Alvi back now that he is attached. Thanks to Otis' assistance, Tim manages to get the mask back from Loki, who quickly puts it on to be able to actually fight for his son. Loki runs away and a car chase quickly ensues. Once Tim and Tanya finally catch up, Loki proposes a wrestling match. Whoever wins gets to keep Alvi. Sounds fair enough. However, considering Loki created the mask that basically replicates his powers, the match turns out to be pointless given their extremely similar abilities. Loki in turn offers to let Alvi decide, which of course Tim agrees to. Originally, Loki was convincing the baby to approach him as he offered him a life of fun, games and luxury. Seeing how Alvi wasn't paying attention to the mask Tim, he decides to take off the mask and convinced him through the power of love, I guess. Alvi almost immediately hurries back to his father, and Loki heartbreakingly admits his loss and returns Alvi. I just wanted a friend. Tearfully claiming he just wanted a friend. Enraged, Loki attempts to kill the family, but Tim, thanks to a sudden surge of strength, stops the god of mischief right before he kills him. Immediately after, Odin shows up and scolds his son. Well, more than scolds, he bans him from Earth, but Tim convinces Odin otherwise. He tells Odin that family is the most important thing we have. And just like that, Odin and Loki are pals. Again? That easy? Huh? Inspired by these series of events, Tim returns to his previous job and pitches a new idea. A dog and a baby competing for their dad's love. The idea turns into a successful cartoon and Tim finally gets the success he was after. As the family watches the show together, Tanya announces she is pregnant once again. Roll the credits! Thank God. So thank God that's over. <laughs> and that's all for today. The Mask 2 in a nutshell. What other movie that shouldn't have had a sequel should we summarize next? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. See you next time.